Tom Zaleski. Today I'm going to spend a small amount of time talking about small-scale model duplication using non-dental products. When I'm out on the field and talking to different technicians, I still run into people who don't want to invest in colloid duplication systems and so forth because um, of the investment and also because they don't have enough duplication to warrant buying one of those units and having it run continuously um, producing uh, a product to duplicate with. Um, there are other systems out there that use two-part silicones but they again are costly for those who only do small-scale duplications. So I wanted to show you today uh, what I do uh, in order to uh, attack that problem. So what you'll need is a twist or snap lid style Rubbermaid take-alongs. These are the two cup size. There's three per package. That's two dollars for the package. They're reusable and uh, they work quite well for this application. They come uh, the, with the twist, I should mention. Um, it's a little more difficult to um, take apart once uh, the silicone is set up and so if you can get the snap lid um, it'll uh, facilitate easier opening. You'll also need to buy some 9 ounce disposable cups. Um, you can buy a 40 pack for $4.60 or you can go on Amazon and buy 800 cups for $15.26. All depends on how much you want to defer your costs and I'll show you uh, the math here as we go along but uh, obviously if you bought 800 cups for 1526 price per cup is going to go down quite considerably then you have to go to Smoothon Corporation you can go online for that smoothon.com and pick yourself up some tin cure silicone uh, the OOMO O O M O O 25 is the silicone. It's a one for one mixing ratio so one part A to one part B equates to a mix and then you'll have to spatulate it. Um, it has a 15 minute pot life and a 75 minute cure time so once you've mixed it and poured it in 75 minutes it's ready to deflask. Um, you can buy the one gallon version here for $153, which is still considerably lower than we would find dental type silicones. Or you could also buy the 2.5 pound kit, which is what they call their trial kit, for $26. And uh, that's, a, that's a real bargain, especially if you're a person that only does a couple of duplications a month. There's no vacuum degassing, and it has a 25 uh, 25 shore hardness. Uh, I've, I've done with one mold in this material I've done 15 duplications with not any problem. Here's the math. If you were to buy the bowls for two bucks and the 40 pack of cups for 460 and the trial size silicone which is $26 and that's the UMU 25 you have a grand total, are you ready for this? $32.60 which is uh, quite affordable for somebody who doesn't duplicate much. It yields about seven molds and I'll show you how you can stretch that a little bit which equates to about four dollars and sixty four cents sixty five cents per mold. Obviously if you buy the gallon ones you buy more cups uh, it's gonna drive the price down even further. Actually it'll drive the price down to around a dollar fifty. Um, but Again, for those who don't want to buy a massive amount because you just don't have that much duplication that you do per month, uh, this is just an ideal way of doing it. So the first thing I do after I get my bowl is I take out a scalpel and I cut along the rim and I cut the bottom out. I flip this over and the, bot the top's going to be the bottom and the bottom's going to be the top because we're going to pour into it. Take, uh, take care to keep your cut on the inside edge to leave this raised edge up. It's just nice to have because with a raised little wall around there that will keep the uh, material from oozing over the sides. 
Then you have to fasten your model to the base because when you start to pour the silicone, you don't want it to float or drift. So what I did was I took uh, one part of the two-part silicone I have here from GC, the GC LT Putty, and I just took one scoop and put a little ball down here. It's sticky. It's, it's actually quite tacky. And then I just take my model and press it down on top of that, and that'll fixate that model to the inside of that lid so it won't float when you uh, pour. Uh, you also may want to take some silicone spray uh, and lightly um, spray the model surface so that the silicone doesn't stick to the surface when you go later to deflask the model out of the silicone. Um, you're going to laugh but PAM uh, works great or uh, any kind of silicone uh, that you can pick up at a hardware store. They also have some Del, uh, dental spray type silicones that are available in the market um, and again uh, I advise it only because it'll make it easier to separate. Then I take old material that I have and what I do is I void fill. In other words I take and chop up the pieces and just place them inside to fill in areas where I would have a waste of material. You could use a meat grinder. You could use. There's lots of different ways to do it, um, and obviously, the more void fill that you have uh, in place, the less silicone you'll have to use, and you'll get a larger yield out of a container of the material if you have less void to fill with new material. So, crumble it up. I try to keep it away from the teeth, but I f I fill that void in around the base. And I'll also put a few pieces in the middle of the pallet because the material will float a little bit when it goes when you pour in the new material in the top. But you're, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cover the teeth with an adequate amount of silicone. And the less you can use, the better when you're uh, filling the mold. That way, like I say, you can stretch your materials and leave your cost associations down. So then I mix it up and pour it in, as I said. And I am just about uh, about seven or eight millimeters above the highest point of the model uh, tooth, in other words. Uh, so I have the teeth adequately covered, and I allow this to set up for about 35 minutes or so. And once it becomes tacky, and it's not going to move when I turn it on edge, and I touch it with my fingers, tacky. What I'll do is I'll take and I'll um, pour in stone or plaster in the at the rest of the the rest of the half. In other words, I'm void filling all of this area as well with just some cheap stone just putting it in there so that I pro it provides a rigid base for the silicone to be up against and nothing's going to move when I go to deflask the model later. And this is just a picture of its setup and you'll notice I didn't go above I didn't go above the edge of that I had cut out so I don't have it running all over the place. You can see the little piece of void fill there. But now this is all filled and this will sit for the 75 minute total so if I did it at 35 minutes you got about another 40 minutes. The stone will be set up at that time and then I can go to the next step which is to flip it over take the cap off. So here I have taken the cap off. Here's that that wad of putty uh, the one part of the two-part putty that I placed to hold the model to the base of the lid. And then what I've done here is I've taken a, a scalpel and I've cut, cut along the silicone, which is basically flash because the silicone ran underneath. And I took the rest of that putty and just cleaned it off so that I have it exposed all the way around. And I suggest that you take and do it on an angle, cut all the way around on an angle, to expose the border all the way around so that when you go to remove it you can wedge a knife and pull it out freely from the silicone. Silicone's not going to tear but it's a bear trying to get it out. What I usually do is I go around with the knife on the edges like this and I kind of break the seal if there's any kind of like little seal between the stone and the silicone and then I'll, I'll shoot a little air down in there and it'll and I'll hold my hand over the top of the base 
and uh, give it a, a burst of air and b basically it'll pop the model out of the mold. And you just got to have your hand there so it doesn't uh, get away from you when it pops out. Anyways, I free up the mold like that and then just pull it out and there I have my I have my mold ready to pour my duplicates from. Here's my master on this case. You can see very clean. Uh, you, if you want, if you if you're doing like practice models or if you're doing course models or anything like that, like I do, I'll just screw the lid back on and hold on to those because I'll be pouring up duplicates for other you know for courses that I'm giving and so forth. But anyways. Once you've uh, removed that, now you can mix up any stone of your preference um, and pour like a duplicate. Here what I did is I poured up, um, this is a resin model uh, from some duplicating resin that I also pick up from um, Smooth On Corporation. But the point is that it's identical, it's cheap, it's inexpensive. I shouldn't say cheap, it's inexpensive. And... Uh, you know, it's there's a very, very, very small investment. So I wanted to show you today that um, for a very little amount of money and with a little bit of technique and a little creative thinking, you can uh, come up with solutions to everyday problems uh, in our laboratory, um, which, uh, you know, without a large investment, uh, without having to make a large investment. And uh, my motto lately is purely analog or pure analog because I believe that uh, uh, what it would cost to duplicate models in other fashions do it with digital far outweighs what I could do with this. And the cost associations are so little that I can duplicate at will. Well, anyways, that is it for this little presentation. I hope that it gave you some ideas and maybe opened your eyes to another way to duplicate without having to make a super large investment for something that you're not going to do that often in your laboratory. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel and please give me a like if you can. Uh, just let me know that you're looking at this stuff and that you want to see more. And uh, with that I'll say goodbye.